And so another <laughs> news, it seems like Bobby Lee from the Tiger Belly podcast is really, really, really worried about getting cancelled. I've kind of felt that in the last couple of weeks or last few months, no, let's say last few weeks, actually. And it makes sense because he announced, I think, a few times that he's developing a show. He's sold a couple of shows. So he's kind of re-entering the Hollywood machine. Right. Um, and I'm sure he's very cognitive or very aware of all the numerous cancellations that happened early in the year, mostly to do with very egregious sexual um you know misadventures from some people but he's obviously aware of the added attention that's been kind of shone on the stand-up comedy scene and he wants to avoid any kind of unnecessary hiccups especially when he's got some big deals on the table that are going to put a lot of money in his pocket but obviously it's a chance for him to kind of re-establish himself because he's always complaining about his position how people kind of look down on him blah 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 blah, blah. so it's a great way to kind of re-enter you know with this kind of momentum of the tiger belly podcast and being really you know doing some amazing numbers and being as successful as it is it's kind of a different energy when you come back into the hollywood studios and writer's room when you've got all this kind of clout behind you so he doesn't want to lose the opportunity i definitely understand it but of course you know he's got a dicey pass right as he's told through numerous stories on the podcast and as you know if you're a fan of the show you'll know some of the misadventures that he's had in his youth and some of the more embarrassing and downright you know yucky things he might or might not have gotten up to and i always kind of suspected that this would eventually end up biting him in the ass, isn't it? As it does with every any other person. I don't think it's fair. I think, you know, comedians should be allowed to live as crazy and as an excessive life as they can because that's what's going to inform their work at the end of the day, right? Um, we don't want straight laced, you know, um valedictorians um giving us comedy specials. We want the weirdest, oddest freaks to get on that stage and tell us all the adventures they get up to in their lives and stories surrounding themselves and things that they've kind of encountered that's what we want we want our communities to be as dangerous as possible i know that's what i want but i know in this world that we live in at the moment over sanitized of course people are going to come up start digging up his past and uh, there was a story that happened a few weeks ago maybe a couple of months ago where somebody i left a clip of you know bobby lee talking about some uh hookup that he had back in the day with an escort or with a, let's say, uh, what would you call them, prostitutes, um, somewhere in Southeast Asia that might have been underage or not. And of course, at the time, the story sounded dicey as fuck, but it was really funny, right? And of course, my, some of it might have been exaggerated for comedic purposes, but, you know, it's a bit of a risky story. And now, of course, with his deal in place, that story got re-earthed. Um, it felt like he was going to get cancelled again. Some tweets went out that may or may not be real. There was a rumour that supposedly Amy Kaufman, the woman responsible for the Crystalia, and Brian Callan takedowns was essentially crafting a piece on Bobby Lee you know soon to be published which I assume is still true those kind of stories aren't they'll just come out of nowhere I assume that story is probably going to um release the same time whatever show he's producing comes out which is really disgusting don't don't even you know super horrible that they'd be vindictive enough to hold the story like that back and then drop it when his show releases so for maximum impact maximum coverage i'm sure that's probably end up happening hopefully it doesn't but i can definitely understand his frustration and his kind of you know um edginess about the issue and he kind of spoke about it here on a recent show from tiger belly 266 where a caller asked a question regarding some risque jokes that made in the past and bobby lee made this comment regarding some of his stories and it was very illuminating very eye-opening but also a little bit disappointing to hear him take this stance because he's worried about you know essentially losing his career but i understand you know you work this hard you don't want to let go of an opportunity that you feel is um once in a lifetime sort of opportunity so i definitely get it but as a fan it's disappointing to hear him reveal this side of it so let me play the clip for you now i work in a corporate setting for a company that sells tools that may or may not be branded with the color orange the other day, I was telling my coworker who I have a f friendship outside of work uh, a story I made up. Let's just say it had to do with midgets and docking, the thing that Gilbert does. <laughs> my boss happened to walk by. I'm not sure if he heard me or not. Should I be worried that I'll get in trouble? And do you guys ever worry about the things you say that are taken, uh, the things that you say are taken at face value? Oh my god. Now this feels like a bit of a canned question it feels like they might have rehearsed this it feels like a question that you know they kind of made up in order for Bobby to talk about this and it's kind of neatly been placed at the end of the show so I'm not too sure but you know listen to what Bobby has to say regarding some of his more um salacious encounters with the ladies this guy should this person be worried that he was talking about listen 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 uh, guy what's his name uh C money to bring back the idea of the context of your heart yeah C money C money I was never gonna share <sighs> I was never going to share what I'm about to share. Then I'm going to share it. Then don't do it. I'm going to share. I'm going to share it. <laughs> uh, um, 
because I was talking to my therapist, you know, about, you know, I was telling her about, you know, the things that I talk about on the podcast. And she's like, you know, but that thing that you just said isn't true. And I go, yeah, I know. I'm in fact, this is so embarrassing to say most of the things I say, you know what I mean? In podcasts over my career. Yeah. Is based either in, you know, some truth or they're complete and utter lies. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, it, you know, podcasting is a medium. And when you're telling a story, you know, it's like, you know, you have to mold it. <sighs> Disappointing. And I, I don't really agree. I think that's completely different. It's conflating two different things. I don't expect every stand-up comedian to go up on stage and tell me a funny story that happens to be true all the time. I'm sure there's some elements of the story that are going to be embellished to make the story better, right? That's kind of the art of storytelling, um, being able to kind of, you know, um, add and subtract certain things that kind of allow for a better, you know, comedic punchline or whatever it may, it may be. But I expect when people are on the podcast, right, especially when they're surrounded by like-minded friends in the industry and shit, it's part of the reason why those podcasts are successful, even some of the ones that I watch and some of the ones I'm sure you watch, is because you feel like you're a bit of a fly on the wall, right? With people that you kind of look up to, you'll be like, oh, wow, I wonder what they talk about when they're behind the scenes. And you kind of get an opportunity to do that via a podcast. So you'd imagine most of these shows, would, most of these conversations they have will be conversations they'd have outside of the show anyway, a blight from, you know, some other private stuff. But you'd assume most of them would be. And if you're, when you're talking to your friends, I don't know about you, but you make up stories when you're talking to your friends, just hanging out. You know, which is essentially what a podcast is, right? You're just hanging out with your friends, having a beer, shooting a shit. Do you make up stories? I don't. I don't just make up a story just so I can entertain them. You might um, exaggerate points, right, to make it funny. But if I didn't meet somebody and I didn't get and I didn't fall over off, you know, when I, you know, left the bus, or if I didn't get, you know, drenched with water by a car that speed past me on my way to work, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to just make it up just so I can make my friends laugh. I'm going to obviously um, share a story that I think is embarrassing, that I think is humorous because I want to see my friends laugh. I'm not going to make up an entire story. So you can definitely see the trepidation and the fear in Bobby Lee's voice when he's talking about this thing because there's a lot on the line for him. So I can understand him taking this stance, but it's concerning, again, as a fan, just myself in it, to hear that, you know, because he mentions later on in the clip, you know, you can watch it yourself, won't play the entire thing, but he does mention in the clip itself that even the famous story of him supposedly getting diddled by the um, the guy that had Down syndrome is completely made up. Oh no, that part of it is made up. The guy didn't have Down syndrome, he was just a regular dude. Uh, and he didn't actually sexual assault, he doesn't think he did, right? He just kind of, he felt that it might have happened. And it's like, God almighty, man, like, this is horrendous. Like, how far will these guys go to in order to save their careers? This is like similar to what Brian Callen did when he deleted all the pictures of Chris D'Elia on his social media feed. We know you guys are friends. You know what I mean, we, we're fans of your show. We know you guys toured together. We know you guys are really close. You did a flipping podcast that essentially was has gone down in the podcast hall of fame in the ten minute podcast. You know I mean, we know these things. With Bobby Lee, it's the same sort of things. You know, if you follow this guy from um, the previous shows that he's been on prior to even Tiger Belly, you'd know that you know he's got he's. And again, I'm a fan. I'm not going to repeat some other stuff, but he's got up, he's got into some really dicey situations. So for him to suggest that all those things were made up just for comedic value is not it's not, it's not believable, especially from a especially from a former addict right? or somebody that's you know that's essentially going through uh, sobriety. It's definitely you can definitely you can definitely um you can definitely uh, figure out you know, that most of these stories were probably true. You know, you don't live a life that Bobby Lee's life without getting involved in some very, very peculiar situations. So again, this is what, this is the basically unintended consequence of cancel culture. You're essentially turning in some of our more eccentric, um, creative, batshit crazy minds into cucks really right you're turning them into wallflowers you're sanitizing a comedy your comedy and um, he's he's basically now self-editing himself when he's on a show which is part of the reason why you watch it is because he's off the handle he kind of goes off the cuff he diverts he goes over there he goes on mad tangents he you know says some crazy wild shit and now you're turning all of our weirdos in society who kind of provide us with comedic escape who allow us to sort of you know unplug from the terrors of the world or just allow us to laugh right you're now make, turning them into what politicians like who gives a shit if he did do what he said he did in the past right that's between him and god right who are we to judge who are we to cancel him in his respect and again he's a stand-up comic right he's not looking after your kid right he's not leading a free world he's not responsible for allocating your tax money he's a bloody stand-up comedian 
they should be left alone and let to do their thing again that's a disappointing thing for me in that regard i don't know about you guys if again if you're a fan of the tiger belly um podcast and bobby lee uh Kalilo and george um and the gang is this disappointing for you um do you feel as if he's let you down i don't know if let you down but is it just disappointing to hear that you know somebody you look up to who you thought lived a bit of a crazy life is essentially making up most of his stories or do you understand that he kind of needs to protect his um you know these deals he needs to look after the people you know he's got responsibilities with people who he's basically got involved with the programs or whatever shows that he's sold and it's understandable that he'd want to protect it in light of what's happened to other people in his craft other people in his industry let me know your comments below do you agree or do you or do you just think he's playing out lying i don't know let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear your thoughts regarding this one i'd love to hear your thoughts